Good morning, bird brains. Not on the ninja today, but uh, I'm not on the ninja for a good reason. So before I get into that reason, I kind of have to go through a backstory about how I received the ninja, how it came into my possession, uh, and now the Sportster is Miss Birds. So back before I got the Camaro, uh, we were basically trying to get rid of the ninja. Uh, Miss Bird has, you know, done her time on it and she has concluded that she's ready to move on. Uh, so we had it up for sale for a while. Uh, I had it on Cycle Trader for three months, I believe. Didn't have any real interest in it. And then when it came time for me to get the Camaro, uh, if I was able to put a little bit of money down, I could get a, a lot better financing on it. So basically how it worked out is I would give her the Sportster, she would give me the Ninja, and then I would just give her the money that came from the cell of the Ninja. So basically I get to keep both bikes, but one is technically hers, if that makes any sense. Uh, so basically she gave me $4,000 as like, uh, a loan almost while I put that money down towards the Camaro so I could take the Ninja and sell it and then give her the four grand that I would potentially get from the Ninja or just give her the four thousand dollars later down the line. So uh, after that deal went down I continued to try to sell the Ninja, went through price drops and stuff like that and once again just not getting any interest on it. And it's been up for the good portion of 2018 so it's not even a seasonality thing at this point. I have it priced reasonably well. It's just not even, like I'm not even getting low balls on it. It's just people don't want this bike. It's a really bad market for starter bikes because San Antonio is kind of stupid when it comes to starter bikes because everyone wants to start off on the 1000cc Busa because that's that's primarily what is around town. <laughs> So uh, just not a good not a good market for starter bikes. So what I'm doing today is I'm actually going down to some of the power sport shops to talk about consignment. Now, from my understanding, consignment's basically, hey, let me keep my bike here, you put it for sale, you sell it, and you get a percentage of the uh, sales price, I think. I, I literally did no research. That is just what I have concluded by using my context clues when other people have talked about uh, consignment. So I'm going to go down, talk to the guys, see what we can work out, uh, see if they'll just give me a cash offer on this bike, because at this point I just want it gone. Uh, Miss Bird has already gotten her money by the time you're seeing this video, so it's not like she's just sitting there waiting for cash. Like, I've already paid her back. I either want to trade it in on another bike, another project, uh, another toy of some sort, or sell it and put that money towards the Dyna so we can uh, pay it off a little bit earlier. So I uh, just don't want it sitting because that's all it's doing right now. It literally gets started like once a month just to keep the battery up and that's about it. Like this is the first time I've rode it in since the last video you guys saw which was probably six months ago if not more. I mean it's not a bad bike like I, I've said before it's a great starter bike. It, it runs well, it stops well, it rides well. Okay. Uh, everything on it's good but it's just it served its purpose for us and it's time to move on to something different. We've also had a lot of people ask about uh, when we're going to see Miss Bird on the Sportster. And I keep telling people when she's ready because, I mean, it's getting to the point now where it's starting to piss me off because I know nobody's meaning, you know, anything bad by it. But you guys have to understand that when you ask me a question, you're one person asking one person a question. But to me, there's 200 people asking me the same question. So it gets a little aggravating sometimes, but I know it's I know it's not you, know, you guys' fault. She'll be riding the sports show when she's ready. I'm not going to push her. Uh, right now, it's not really her fault because it's uh, it's kind of in pieces. We we got into the middle of a build and we had to send parts off for powder coat, and then we were missing some pieces. And it's been like a two or three week ordeal. But even on top of that, guys, like it is still constantly in the 90s. Maybe not by the time you're seeing this because they are delayed. But as of recording this, it is uh, September 28th. It's still 90 degrees here, guys. So. Uh, parking lot riding on a Harley 
in that type of heat is just one it's not pleasant to the person doing it and two it's not good for the bike uh, they're air-cooled motors so they, they need to be moving to stay cool so uh, we should be getting into some cooler weather fairly soon I'm hoping at that point the Dyna or sorry the Sportster will be done and uh, we will get out to the parking lot but I'm not pushing her anymore I've tried to do the you know supporting come on let's go but I feel like that discourages her more because she feels too pressured so I'm just gonna let her kind of take it at her own pace a Roblox wife Tracy has actually been really supportive with her and uh, has offered to, to take her out of the parking lot just to kind of once again separate me from the situation because like I've, I've said previously is like kind of like as a kid when you were growing up like you didn't listen to your dad but you listened to your coach like that was how I was and I think it's kind of that same situation so I'm just kind of stepping back and when she's ready to ride I'll ride if she asks me to go practice I will be there but I'm not going to to push her or ask her to go do it she's actually been uh, looking at uh, spiders the three-wheel motorcycle things and I think they're pretty dope especially their newest one uh, here's a picture of that that one looks really cool uh, it's only a 500 cc though so I don't know how I feel about that they also sold a 900 cc version and they're not that expensive they're sub 10 grand but uh, I showed it to her after she had been talking about it I was like dude check this out it's the new one and she's like oh my god I want it but the internet would hate me <laughs> I was like <laughs> If I don't care, then why would you care about what the internet says? I mean, I know there's going to be some rude comments on the channel because, I mean, they freaked out when she got the ninja. But, I mean, if it's something that she likes and she has fun with it, then what the internet thinks should be the last thing on her mind. <laughs> I was going to try to hit the interstate, but that was not happening. <laughs> oh, man, this little thing was not getting up to speed quick enough. Oh, hey, look at that. Is that one of the new ones? I don't know. All right, I'm gonna go talk to these guys and I'll check back with you uh, after we're done here. <sighs> well, that took forever, literally like two hours, but it was mostly me bullshitting with the salesman. Not so much them taking too long. So when it was all said and done with, uh, we looked at trades. They didn't really have anything that I really, really, like, absolutely couldn't live without. But uh, they did a trade evaluation of 3000 which is actually a lot higher than I was expecting. And they said that was uh, one of the highest that they've seen but uh, i told him about the channel and everything and the guy i was talking to has actually had a marketing as well so he was uh really trying to help me out but uh the two bikes i was looking at trading for was a 2007 yamaha v-star which is basically it's like a smaller road king uh here's a picture of it uh it, it's got potential i could see it turning into something cool I don't know, maybe like a rat bike or something. Uh, then they also had a CRF 250L, which is like a, a street legal dirt bike, which I really liked. I think it was a 14 or 15. I was honestly more inter interested in that one than I was the V-Star. And the prices came out to be about the same. But uh, after trading, I was still looking at like 1500 that I'd have to pay. And I just, uh, not really the right time, I guess. So like if they would have given me three grand cash, I would have said, yeah, sure, let's do it. But three grand on a trade-in that I'd have to end up spending another $1,500, eh, doesn't seem, doesn't make sense to me. Although I have been talking about a supermoto build for, <laughs> it feels like years now. So maybe a little 250 supermoto would be kind of cool would not do consignment they said they don't do that because any if they have a policy anything that's on their lot they have to own so consignment wasn't an option so i might just i might go talk to other shops there's a lot of other shops here in town uh, i might go look at what they have used uh, as far as inventory see if we can work out a trade i would like a straight trade but of course no business is going to really want to do that so I guess the uh, ninja lives to see another day. I don't know. I'm just, I don't like projects or bikes sitting stagnant. Like I like them either being wrenched on or being ridden or I don't know. I, I hate seeing this bike just sit here. I'm not ready to take on another bike payment or fork out $1,500 in cash to get another bike. So I don't know. 
I, I, like I said, I really want to focus on paying the dyno off. At the same time, I need to get do something with this. So, if you're watching this video and you're interested in buying this, I'll give any bird brains an awesome deal. Well, guys, sorry for the 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 anticlimactic episode. I was hoping to either walk out of there with a new bike or at least some cash to put towards the dyno. <laughs> But we came home with the same bike that we left with, so I'm oh, sorry, it's, it wasn't my choice. But I have to get back home to get online for mail time, not mail time, game night. <laughs> if you're part of the Patreon and uh, you don't know what game night is, well, you didn't read the Patreon. If you don't know what game night is, it's a, uh, a night once a month that me and my buddies hop on, usually Xbox, and play some games together. Also, if you're part of the Patreon, you're able to join that as well. And then anybody who's not a part of the Patreon is still able to come and watch uh, via... Uh, oh my god. Twitch! God, I just had a brain fart there. I couldn't remember what it's called. Uh, we stream the game nights via Twitch. We hang out in the chat. It's basically a live stream of just playing video games, hanging out. And we usually get someone intoxicated as well. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, head over on to the Patreon for more details on that. Can you guys see these butterflies on the GoPro? I know I've mentioned this in years prior, but uh, San Antonio lies in the migration path of these butterflies. So between when they hatch and when they go up north for winter, uh, it's just a swarm of butterflies for about a week or so. Uh, every day around this time, it just, I mean, you just see hundreds of thousands of butterflies. Man, this episode got weird. <laughs> Alright guys, that's going to do it for today's episode. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't already, go ahead and punch that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.